Yaskawa. <laughs> This video shows the system requirements, installation, and connection methods for DriveWizard Industrial. There will also be some practical tips and tricks thrown into the mix regarding these topics. Despite DriveWizard Industrial being a very powerful support tool, it doesn't require very much as far as system requirements to run. One of the biggest requirements that you'll need to keep in mind is that the laptop or desktop that you're installing DriveWizard Industrial on must be running Windows XP or higher. That means no Mac operating system and also you don't want to try installing this on your old Commodore 64. You will notice the rest of the requirements are minimal such as 512 megabytes or 1 gigabyte of RAM depending on your operating system you also only need 100 megabytes of hard drive space and common sense devices like a mouse or a trackpad and a monitor for displaying the actual software is of course needed. Installation is pretty simple and straightforward. However, if you ever do run into any issues during installation, try installing the software as an administrator. This should resolve most installation problems. You can also try installing DriveWizard Industrial using XP mode in Windows. This is sort of a last ditch effort if you have reoccurring installation issues. It is not very common that you have to use this troubleshooting method. Once the program is installed, open it and select the Drive Selection button. A window that looks like this will open up and this will display the different connection methods that are available. Let's start with the USB connection. Both the A and P1000 drives have a USB port built right into the control board. Any standard type A to B USB cable will work and it will interface right to DriveWizard Industrial. Most people think of USB as always being a plug and play type of connection. The trick is that you do need to install the Escawa USB driver to properly connect to a drive. The driver itself, though, is actually located in the DriveWizard Industrial folder. All you need to do is tell Windows where to locate it and then install it. To manually install the USB driver, first physically connect to the drive. Then open up Device Manager on your computer. One way to get there is to right click on My Computer and then click on Manage. Once this box opens up, click Device Manager on the left pane and then locate the drive. It is usually under other devices and named Cosmo Series Inverter. See that little yellow warning symbol there? That means that the driver is not installed. So what you're gonna have to do is right click the device and then click Update Driver Software. Browse your computer for the driver and point Windows to this folder for 64-bit operating systems. And for 32-bit operating systems, the driver location is slightly different. Just knock out that x86, and then you're on your way. Once you click Next, it may take up to a couple of minutes until a window pops up asking if you would like to install this device software. Of course, you're going to click Yes, and let the process finish from there. Here's something that's constantly overlooked. Windows can sometimes drag while it is running its automatic search for a proper driver. While it is running this search, you will not be able to manually install the driver. So what you will have to do is make sure that Windows has finished its search attempt before trying to install the driver. You can tell if Windows is currently searching by checking the taskbar. Once the driver is set up, you can connect to your drive. When you are connected via USB, you will get a green check mark next to the USB connection option. It is also good practice to use the test button and verify communication is there. The information on the left side of the box, drive series, version, model number, and control method are at default values until you go online with the drive or you could just hit the scan button. The scan drive button will automatically populate this information with which drive you are currently connected to. So even if, for example, you think you have an F7 drive 
and you select it from the drop down menu, Drive Wizard Industrial will automatically correct your selection to match the detective drive. Now, before we connect with USB, let's go over the other connection methods which are available. Another popular connection uses serial connection. The serial cable consists of a DB9 connector on one side and an RJ45 type connection on the other. This cable can be purchased from Yaskawa using part number UWR004. 68-2 or it can be made since we have the drawing available online. Since most newer PCs do not have a serial connection, a third party USB to serial adapter is commonly used. The driver for this adapter must also be installed. The procedure is very similar to the direct USB cable driver, but it uses the manufacturer of the adapter's driver instead. When connecting the serial cable, you must remove the keypad to access the RJ45 port. Connect the other end of your adapter, which is connected to your PC or directly to a serial port. When using a serial cable, you must tell drivers and industrial which communication port you are currently connected to. To determine this, you're going to have to go back into the device manager. Once you locate the proper port, you want to go to the Communication Setup tab and use the drop down menu to select the correct port number. If you do not want to use the Device Manager, you can always take the long road by trying each port individually and scanning for the drive each time until it works. To save time in the future when using a serial cable, you can just place a small label right above the port you plan on using. This way, you always plug into the same port and you always know what the number is of that port. Another connection option available is Ethernet. This is going to require an option card to be installed onto the drive. For the 1000 series inverters, you can use an SI-EN3 or an Ethernet IP card, an SI-EM3 or a Modbus TCP IP card, or lastly an SI-EP3 Profinet option card. As for the 7th generation drives, a CM090 or a CM092 option card is required. By selecting the Ethernet radio button and clicking on the default IP address, you will find the network configurator on the lower right. This will list all Yaskawa drives currently connected to the network. This is great if you do not know which the current IP address is on a drive. Be sure to note the transfer button. The transfer button transfers the IP address of the selected drive directly to the IP address section. This is going to save time by eliminating the need to manually type in the IP address. Once you scan the network to list the online drive, you can directly change the IP addresses right in the configurator. Just type in the new address and click update. The update button saves the changes and the drive's network card will then automatically reboot. Then wait a few seconds because we need to wait for the device to boot up before attempting to access it again. The final connection option for drivers at industrial is the Y stick. The Y stick allows the drive to connect to the USB port on a PC. It can also read, copy, and verify drive parameter settings from one drive to another. If the Y stick is used, it is necessary to install a driver from Yaskawa. The driver installation procedure is the same as that of the USB Type A to B cable. The difference is in the driver itself. The driver is available on Yaskawa.com and it is named SP1824 underscore 001. You'll need to tell drivers industrial that are using a Y stick by selecting the proper radio button at the communication setup window.